Hi everybody, my name is Emma, welcome to Emma Rosen Books and in today's video I wanted to explain to you how I made the hardback cover for this book, my new hardback edition of Lily the Limpet Gets Lost which is out on the 22nd of September 2020. So depending on when you're watching this it may or may not be out, um, the links are below of course. So um, I already had the paperback, this paperback came out last year, um, I'm releasing the hardback on the anniversary of the paperback. Um, but I wanted a hardback edition. Now when I made the paperback, as far as I'm aware, the only hardback option that Ingram Spark had, I use Ingram for my distribution of the physical copies of Lily. Ingram Spark didn't have an option, they, they only had a cloth bound with dust jacket version and I felt for a children's book, especially where they're probably going to chuck the dust jacket off, they don't want just a cloth book. It might work for a novel but if for me it just wasn't going to work for a children's book but now that they offer case laminate so you can have the nice colourful hardback that suited me um, and was something that I wanted to make so as I say I already had the paperback so um, this is a saddle bound paperback through Ingram Spark I've explained on this channel how I went about making that um, saddle bound, by the way, means that it's just folded over and stapled, basically. So this doesn't have a spine, but to be honest, a children's, a short book, won't have enough width for you to be able to put anything on the spine anyway, even if it's perfect bound. Um, but yeah, already had this, so I just used these files, basically, to help create this. If you want to have a look at how I made these files, I'll link the the um, video, because obviously it may be that you're making a hardback from scratch, so if you want to check any of that, then you can. Just firstly to mention my interior files, I used the same interior files. So you can look at how I made those, that's how I made the inside of the book. With one small change, of course because these are different formats, they had to have different ISBNs. So that meant that on the copyright page, doop -doo, there, I had to change the ISBN on there. So all I did was go back to my pages file, I'm a Mac user, I use pages to format these, changed that, exported it as a PDF. Um, as I've said on this channel before, Ingram Spark don't seem to like the PDFs generated by pages. So I then had to ask my lovely friend Pete um, if he would just run it through Photoshop. If you look at the file submission guide, it explains exactly how to do that. So I could just give him that and say, this is what you need to do. So he could just change the settings of the PDF so that Ingram Spark would accept it. So if you've got a nice friend who will do that for you, <laughs> you can do that or get hold of Photoshop um, and do it yourself. So, so as I say, I used exactly those interior files. I could have made changes if I wanted. I could have made the trim size bigger. I could have added pages. You know, your hardback can be a different edition. You could have colouring pages or extra information about the author or questions or information, but I just wanted to keep it simple. So it is the same, but you obviously have the option of changing things if you wanted to for different editions. So. Obviously the focus of this video is the actual cover because that's the main thing that was different. So um, on a paperback all you're doing is just doing that full wrap front and back and as I say there's barely a spine on this so it's just a simple case of creating that. Whereas with a hardback you have got your front, your back, probably do have enough room to put something on the spine and you also have to bear in mind that on the inside your book folds over then with this piece of paper stuck here. So your cover comes around. Now I've taken the decision that mine does not, my image does not wrap around into that, but you could. Um, so it just depends what you want to do. You then have this page automatically added. You don't need to allow for this in your, in your interior files. It's like a thicker um, GSM paper. It's not quite a card, but a lot thicker. And then it goes into your interior in the same way that on my paperback that was the first page, this is a signed, my daughter's signed book. Um, so there you go. So it's a slightly different beast. The other thing I want to point out to you is, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but this ridge that hardbacks have, so the spine, where it kind of connects to the boards, you get this little dimple, um, which if you had words, I think it's okay if you've got pictures, but if you've got words that fall into there then you're going to have to be careful of that or a significant part of the image this kind of more needs to be like a margin so unfortunately my that wasn't the case for my image it's absolutely fine um, but just bear that in mind that little kind of 
what would you call that? It's probably got a technical publishing name, but little nodule, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so there are differences in creating this cover. So I'm going to explain how I went about doing it. I've used Canva, um, and as I say, I'm publishing through Ingram Spark. So here goes, over to my laptop. I'm going to run through the method that I use. There's other ways of doing it, but I found this quite an easy way of creating it. I'll explain all the ins and outs of it as we go. But the first thing I did was to use the Ingram Spark cover template generator to create a template. So you simply fill in the information and I'll link this below, but um, it's easy, easy to find with a, just a, a web search. So you put your ISBN in there. You don't have to put in a publisher reference number. You put in your trim size. So mine is eight and a half by eight and a half. Then you choose, so it's a children's book, so I want color. Obviously, whatever your specifications are, you put them in here. Mine was premium color. You choose hardback. Now for this particular set of options, I've only have the option for case laminate. They do also offer a, a cloth bound hardback and they offer dust jackets, but you will have to check which trim sizes allow which options. Um, mine was gloss. You put your page count in there. Mine was 28, definitely not 280. Um, and you can see it has to be a multiple of two between 18 and 840. So make sure that your book falls into those, those specifications. And then you choose your file type. Now for me, I can't open InDesign files. I don't have any Adobe programs. If you know how to use InDesign, you have InDesign, or you want to look at some tutorials, you can get a free trial of InDesign. You can go for that, but I mean, I can't even open these. So for me, I'm going to go for a PDF. You put your email address in, you confirm it. If you want, you can add your price and then they'll put the price onto the, the um, template as well. And then you submit it and you will just get it emailed to you. Um, I do want to point out, you do have the option on here. Have a check of your pricing. If you've got any suspicions about you're not sure what you want to choose, what options and how that will work with pricing. So you can have a look at, at the publisher compensation calculator um, for that. The other thing they have here that's useful is the weight and spine width calculator. This is helpful if you don't want to use the generator and you want to set up your own file uh, without their template. You can just check what the spine width will be. It's also helpful if you're looking at what your postage options are. So how heavy is your book going to be? How big is it? How wide is it going to be? All that stuff. So there's those options there. Um, another quick point is do have a look at their file um, guides. They're really, really useful um, if you're not sure on what the template means or any little bits and pieces. The file submission guide, sorry. Have a look at that. It gives you lots and lots of tips if you're struggling, things aren't quite working right. It, it is a really good, useful little, little guide. So make sure you have a little look through that before you create your file um, because it can be really handy for understanding how to do it. Okay, so now you should have your templates. I'm going to show you the two that I have, um, the paperback and hardback, just to explain a few things about them. So here is the paperback template. Now the paperback, um, as you can see, so I used a saddle bound version. You might do perfect bound, which would be different. But with saddle bound, it's essentially a piece of cardboard folded in half with staples in it. So this, the spine allowance is very, very narrow. This is literally just to allow the book to be folded over. So it's 1.727 millimeters. It's tiny, okay? And really all you're doing is putting a picture on the front, a picture on the back very very simple and I'll link to my tutorial of when I, I did that however also it's very easy to work out the various allowances so you know what your spine allowance is you know how big your trim size is and the bleed size is uh, the bleed margins are three millimeters so you can calculate the size of this pink and blue area which is what I did when I did the tutorial before um, and then you can cut out this area and create a cover that is simply just the cover it's a little bit more complicated with hardback, I'll show you that. So on the hardback file you can see that the spine is wider, so this is 6.35 millimeters. You can also see that there are these lines now, um, these denote where the, the um, laminate is folded around the board, so these are going to be folded around your book, not part of the front, okay? And this here 
is on a hardback where you have like a little dimple on the front and the back of it. Um, so that's showing you kind of that area. So it's slightly more complicated to figure out the dimensions when you're doing a hardback because you have these areas I've talked about um, to add up. Basically, you have your, your uh, trim size, the spine width, which is listed in there. You've also got this area where the board's attached to the spine, which is actually listed over here, board width. And then this area where it folds around the boards is called the fold area and is a standard of 16 millimeters. Now all of this is in the file submission guide. And of course you can just add up your different blocks of the template and do some simple maths. Um, but I discovered when I was making this and trying to get my head around it, that the alternative is to look down here where it says document size. And this is what it tells you to do in the, in the guidelines. This is the size of the document, including the white space. So you um, can submit to Ingram either a cover of the pink and blue area, if you wish, which is what I did last time, or a cover including all this white space and they will just cut it out. And it seemed a lot simpler just to use these dimensions and be sure that they were absolutely right and I could just drop everything into the template and make sure every area was covered rather than um, running the risk of having added something up wrong. Um, so I thought that, that was a more straightforward way of doing it. But if you look at my paperback tutorial, I did it the other way. Okay, now I'm gonna work on this in Canva because that's a program I find easy to use. Like I said, I can't use Adobe programs. I should probably learn, but I haven't. So what I'm going to do is export this as a JPEG. You could do a screenshot or something, but you probably not likely to get the dimensions absolutely perfect. So I'm gonna export this as a JPEG. Okay, so then here is Canva. So you can see some of my designs here. Canva's great, by the way, if you wanna create, I mean, anything really, <laughs> graphic design, really easy to use. Um, you're gonna to want to create a custom design. So you go create a design. You can see I've already put the dimensions in. So we've got a height, sorry, a width of 584 millimeters. Make sure it's set to millimeters and not pixels and 354 millimeters in height. So you say create new design, and there we go. So this has the dimensions of that white area that you had earlier. So then I'm gonna find that file and drop it on top. Okay, so then you're gonna stretch your image out so that it fills up your custom design here, and then you're gonna start working on your image. So, okay, so what you're going to do is layer up all of the, the different elements that you want. Now I'm quite lucky in that Lily has got a lot of white space, makes it a little bit easier to do, um, but you can kind of color match colors if you need to stretch things out. It, you play with it, you'll find lots of different things you can do. So I'm gonna look for my cover. I'm not gonna do a perfect job here, um, but I'll give you an idea of how I built it. Okay, so I've got my front and my back covers here that I created for my paperback. Have a look at the paperback version, um, but essentially, I, I made these in pages. So I can line these up. I'm not going to do the most thorough job right now, but you'll you'll get the idea. Um, with the edge of the spine there, let's make this a lot smaller. And I'm going to move this out a touch and kind of make it so that the edges of my image, like so, I want Lily basically to fold over a little bit at the edge. Um, and then the back, I'm gonna match size pretty much and put that the same so it's gonna fold over. Obviously play with it and get it exactly in the place that you want it. Sorry, this needs to go more up to the edge there. But you can see now I've got this blue folding over part, okay? Um, and then my image is nice and comfortably in the pink area. If you want your picture to fold over the edge more or less, then you can obviously stretch that however you wish. You'll find that your paperback files aren't going to fit in terms of aspect ratio in that, but you can, you know, you can play around with how you want to do that. Um, so I'm going to have mine like this. Now you do have the option, if you want, of doing something like duplicating the cover and then look, I can crop out the names. And then I can crop the names off this one and do this kind of thing, which I did do to put the names higher or further over or however you like to center them. So you can do things like that, cut little areas out. I'm going to put that about there. Um, 
then what I also did was I added um, a spine. I could just about get one in there. So text, um, my, if I just do a subheading, my font was, 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 Kaoshan. I'll just type it in. If you need fonts, go on to uh, Font Squirrel. It's a good site. And then I'm going to type, you can type whatever you want. I've got um, our author names on here as well. You can put your logo in if you want. Um, and then I can rotate that round until it's 90 degrees. Whoops. Get it as close as I can. Obviously, again, I'm not going to get this perfect. Oh, there we go. Um, and make it teeny weeny tiny. And make sure that it's in the pink. <laughs> Try to pick the thing up. Uh, the pink. Oh, no. The pink box here. So you can zoom in, make sure that you're happy that it's centered however you want it uh, and however you want it. And then you can make sure that that is centered and however you want it. So if you want it in the middle, you want it up here with the author name and illustrator name on, which is what I've done. Anyway, so put that in your spine, figure out where you want all your elements. Um, then what you can do, which I did, is add a white box um so when you choose the color if your cover is a different color you will find some document colors so i want white but that's how you can kind of find the the colors and look here you've got the photo colors and all the different image colors so i could for example have it the exact color of lily the limpet but anyway so if you want to create a background that fits in maybe with other elements maybe your background is i don't know pink and you want that exact pink to carry on into these blue parts you can choose that exact colour. Um, so I'm going to get this so that it fills up that area and goes to the edges. Now, when I actually did this, I spent a lot of time making sure it perfectly went to the edge. So, you know, you can be more precise. And then you just send that backwards. There we go. Is that? No, that was too far. There we go. And then essentially you've got a cover. Now, at the moment we're missing the barcode. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So what I want is another um, of the the template um, files. Okay, so there's the template file. Now I sometimes have an issue with this vanishing when it becomes large, but anyway. Um, and then what I want to do, so it's now it's the exact size because the, uh, the barcode has to be the right size. And then I crop it. Again, you can go in nice and close and make sure that you've done it perfectly. But I'm gonna do it relatively quickly. So there's your barcode. Now with Ingram, you can put your barcode anywhere on the back. So I could put it there in the middle like they have. Um, or on my book, it's kind of over here. If you want to check the guidelines again, what you can do is this is your, um, your template. Whatever you want to do to check the guidelines, bring it to the front. Sorry, you can just press to the front and then set the transparency so you can see through it. So if you just want to double check, oh, yeah, that's not in the blue area. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, and then just send that back to the back. OK, so if you just want to check any of those guidelines, that's what you do. So you can put your barcode wherever you want it. And then on mine, I have some little elements. I have my website and I have my logo. Um, so I'll show you that quickly. Um, here we go. So. There's my logo. Again, just put it however you want it. Um, you know, it will be a personal thing. So there's my logo. And there's my publishing company website. You can do however, whatever you want around this barcode. As long as the actual barcode remains black and white, you can put elements around it to make it fancier if that's what you want to do. And obviously on Canva, it will give you guidelines. So that's the exact size of the barcode. And then I can move that, whoops, didn't mean to do that. And then I can move the website up a little bit. And I can make that smaller if I want to, however you want. So then you've got something more stylistic. That would actually be higher and cropped in a bit. But anyway, there we go, something like that, okay? So then you get approximately, um, how you want your cover to be, obviously fine tune that. Um, this document is then ready. So you submit it 
with all this white area still available, as I said. So you simply download and you want to select a PDF. So you just go download. Um, you don't want a PNG, you want a PDF. Uh, and I want a really nice quality one. And then you just hit download. And there's your cover, job done. So I hope that you found that useful. Like I say, there's other ways of doing this. You could use InDesign, um, you could use Photoshop. Uh, it depends if you've got the knowledge to use those. There's also um, open source versions. And please, please, as always, if you did this a different way, if you used other programs, then please leave that in, in the comments. And of course, there's always the option to just pay somebody <laughs> if that's what you want to do, depending on your budget. But this is how I went about doing this. So hopefully you find, find all of that useful. I didn't entirely make it clear, the PDFs from Canva are totally fine for Ingram Spark. So you don't need any of the running it through Photoshop that I needed with pages. Just to be clear, anything you generate through Canva is absolutely fine on Ingram Spark. So that cover just went straight up. It was lovely. Um, so yeah, upload everything, order yourself a proof, and hopefully you're all really happy with it. Don't forget to hit like, and like I said, leave in the comments anything, if you've got any insights to doing this a different way, or using different software, or if you have any questions. <laughs> um, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this one. Take care.